what reasons can be given to the court um, to, to proceed with, with a divorce and file a petition. There is only one ground on which a petition for divorce may be presented to the court, and that is that the marriage has broken down irretrievably, i.e. beyond repair. The court will not find that the marriage is broken down unless the petitioner satisfies the court that one or more of the five factors specified in section 1-2 of the Matrimonial Causes Act 1973 is present. The onus is very much on the petitioner in bringing the divorce application to the court to show that they can bring themselves within, within the, uh, one of the, the, the five factors. Um, so the five factors are, uh, in summary, A, the first factor, adultery uh, and intolerability. Uh, so there are two limbs to this first uh, factor. Adultery must have taken place in the first instance. In case law defines adultery as a voluntary sexual intercourse between two persons of the opposite sex, that's very important, they have to be the opposite sex, uh, one or both of whom are married. And then the second element is that the petitioner finds it intolerable to live with the respondent after the adultery, after the act of adultery has taken place. And in practice, this element uh, rarely causes um, any issues. Causal link doesn't necessarily have to be identified between the uh, adultery itself and the intolerability that pursues thereafter. Um, you can just show the intolerability aspect. It sort of naturally follows on anyway from, from, the, uh, from the adultery that has taken place. Um, the test is purely subjective. The petitioner has to merely convince the court that he finds he or she finds it intolerable to live with the respondent after the act of adultery has taken place. Uh, the second factor um, uh, that goes to show the irretrievable breakdown of, of a marriage is that of unreasonable behaviour. Uh, this has a wide application um, and a relatively low uh, threshold. Um, the respondent, it must be shown by the petitioner, again the onus is on the petitioner, to show that the respondent has behaved in such a way that the petitioner cannot reasonably expect it to, to carry on living with the respondent. Um, case law gives much guidance uh, on, on this point and sets out um, what, what constitutes effectively uh, unreasonable behaviour. In Birch Birch, the petitioner managed to file successfully for, div for divorce, the petitioner was a wife, on, on the grounds that uh, the male respondent was a nationalist with dogmatic tendencies managed to set, successfully uh, petition uh, the divorce and, and get that through on, on those grounds. And there's also uh, one of my personal favourites is the, the rather trivial uh, comical case of lines versus lines. Uh, in this case the wife petitioned for the divorce on the basis that her husband demanded that she persistently tickle his feet uh, every evening before bed. Um, and she was again able to meet the requirements of unreasonable behaviour and satisfy the court in doing so that the, uh, that the marriage had broken down irretrievably um, beyond repair. A third factor is that of desertion. Um, this is where the respondent to the divorce has deserted the petitioner for a continuous two year period prior to the initiation of proceedings. For desertion to be shown, the couple must physically be apart and there must be a lack of consent to this um, physical separation. It's, it's not enough for uh, the couple to agree to the separation. There must be this lack of consent that is shown uh, for a continuous period of two years. Again, it's not enough for the respondent to return say to the formal matrimonial home for a period of uh, weeks or months uh, to continue in cohabiting with the uh, petitioner, um, that will break the continuity, that will break the um, continuous period of, of cohabitation. So sporadic cohabit cohabitation throughout that two year period is, is not permitted, it will break the, the continuity. Uh, the fourth factor is, is, is two years separation with consent. The parties um, to the marriage must have lived apart for a continuous period of two years 
immediately prior to the petition being filed at the court, and the respondent must consent to the decree being made. Uh, either party can uh, petition uh, the court on this, on this basis. A fifth factor, uh, five years separation, very much similar to the two years separation, apart from, the, apart from that it's five years, and the respondent does not need to consent to the decree being made. Either party can petition the court um, based on five years separation. It's worth noting perhaps that there is no defence to this factor except to deny the separation or to prove grave hardship under Section 5 of the Matrimonial Causes Act 1973. In showing uh, grave hardship, the court will have regard to all the circumstances and all the facts, including the interests of any children to the marriage and the interests of the parties in general. Um, most uh, frequently, most commonly, grave hardship is pleaded under uh, financial grounds. Um, it operates as a complete defence, and so if the respondent can prove grave, grave hardship, the couple will then remain married. They won't have discharged the uh, evidential burden um, placed upon them to show that uh, one of the factors for divorce exists and that the marriage has broken down beyond repair. So that, in essence, is a sort of very fleeting overview of, of the five factors um, of, of, of divorce. And various specific elements are needed to prove each of these uh, for a petitioner to bring their circumstances within the ambit of one or more of these five factors. Um, it is for the petitioner to show that the factors exist and for the respondent to rebut the facts presented, if need be, and raise uh, a defence, as we've seen with the, with the fifth and the last factor, the, the, the defence of grave hardship. So the parties to a divorce must be aware of the implications of continued cohabitation exceeding six months. This can override factors such as unreasonable behaviour and adultery, for example, and as we've seen as well with, with desertion, um, if a couple um, cohabit, that can have um, implications and present a bar to the uh, petition being, being granted. Um, a case study, uh, by way of an example of, of cohabitation, is where um, the petitioner uh, presents the petition to the court on the basis um, that unreasonable behaviour has occurred. X and Y have a heated row. This is cited as an example of the unreasonable behaviour, uh, which occurs in January 2014. The couple then carry on living together after this for a period of more than six months, uh, and this will then override the uh, example of unreasonable behaviour is that's cited by, by the petitioner. Um, the court will read into it and deem the, the couple to have uh, reconciled effectively uh, if they continue to live together for more than six months after the date of um, unreasonable behaviour. A period of less than six months is generally disregarded by the court. So if the court is convinced that one or more of these factors has been established by the, peti by the petitioner so as to show the irretrievable breakdown of the marriage, then the court is obliged to allow the petition and, to grant, and grant decree nisi. Um, we will discuss the, the different stages and procedure for a divorce in future videos, as well as um, the issues of mediation, especially with regards to the financial stage of a divorce on contentious and non-contentious basis.